Printing with flexible materials always is a more challenging job for 3D printer. The first time I tried was seven years ago and it was not a great experience. Um, for example, I use this TBE material as you can see here, which is very soft. It's a very soft, but the main problem I had was the filament getting lock at the extruder and the warping like you can see here. You can see here this angle here. It's warping. It doesn't stick to the print bed. Even though I use ornamental, I use glue tape, I use glue, and uh, finally I can make this with this much warping because I use a bunch of rim around this. Anyway, uh, this is the best I could get of TBE seven years ago. Anyway, I recently printed again. This time I used the TBU 95A. It's a little bit harder than TBE, so I was hoping for better result. And I got the brand from Polyflex of um, Polymaker. Um, I was impressed by the first date, actually. Uh, let's put aside the quality. Here, this is the one. Let, let's put aside the quality. We will talk about it, the whole thing about it later. Um, the first step. It has a free process, I, I would say. I don't have to open the, the extruder many times to fix the filament. So the number one goal, printable, done. Now let's talk about things that we care the most, the quality of the print. As you can see here, is is very bad layering. And also it looks like it's under extrusion. So I printed this with the 0.6 nozzle and the layer height here is 0.3 millimeter as you can see. Then, um, okay, I said, let's check on other methods that people use to smooth TBU because I was hoping maybe it could fix the problem. As you can see in the table here, thank you to the Reddit link I put aside there. There's many ways that they use to smooth TBU and um, actually I try one of the thing I try is I use this um, iron soldering iron to smooth it so what I did is um, I mesh it around here let me look for the spot okay it's on around here like you can see here what I did is I just get the nozzle is hot and just smooth it around this, smooth it around it. It make the things flatter or smoother. Uh, let me put it next to the brothers of this one you can see. Uh, you can see it or not. Here. This is clearly show it gets smoother that surface, but because the layering is so bad, then this thing like doesn't have that much you still see gap between okay so i try another the mentor that other guys he already do is with the hot air gun uh and i get a little bit better result here like you can see the shiny one we i read i did get to a glossy glossy finish but the thing is my print is not on the flat surface so when I use hot gun on it I have to put on this surface and then it it bend down because of it follow the gravity right so I didn't get smooth and flat surface as I wanted so I try okay I try to sand it to see if it could fix you see how where I sand it there's the mark here and here where I sanded it but doesn't have either so I read more and uh, there's part that's talking about the flow rate okay so to print this one I use Prusa slicer I use Prusa i3 to print and they only like presetting for semi flex in there and I check the flow rate override of them is 1.12 for semi flex for this is semi flex it not Flex, completely flexible so I put it there is worth is worth 
1.12. So I said, let's try, let's try to print it with 1.15 to see how it goes. Okay, and here is the result. You can see it already much much better. Okay, I say okay. I have some hope in this way. So what I did is like I don't want to bring every single piece like this to test for every flow rate. So I want to make a um, flow rate test tower like the you know like the temperature tower, but I gonna make flow rate test tower. So let's go make it. Just right after a quick look at the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. It's a one-stop solution for all manufacturing needs, from PCB making to CNC machining. All you have to do here is upload your files and you will get an instant code. They have so many choices about material or manufacturing methods that for sure will fulfill what you need for your project. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a flow rate test tower in Prusa. Uh, this STL file I'm gonna put in the description so we can have it. I made it with FreeCAD. Please change to FreeCAD because it's a very good CAD software and it's free for everybody to use. Um, I designed a small tower with different layer. Each of them is like 10 mm in thickness. And uh, I'm gonna put different flow rate for each of the layer. Not for it's for each of that 10 millimeter from here to here. I didn't write the number right here because my number may be different from you. Uh, for example, I tested from 1.15 uh, 1 to 1.40, but you may test like 1.10 to 1.20 or 1.10 to 1.25. So I leave it empty here. It you at your number as you want. Now, how can we set different flow rate for? different uh, height in here uh, and you can see that this is semi flex that shows the setting of Prusa so the filament here is uh, is actually it's 1.12 when it come out like this um, so what we want to do is we want to put like I told you I tried before right the I tried with 115 so I'm gonna put 115 up to here then gonna be 120 from here to here, 125 from here to here, for example. The code that we need to add in the G code of the STL file is this M221 set flow rate percentage. For example, if you want to put flow rate to 150%, we put M221 as 150 in here. So now let's come back to uh, Prusa and we can add this custom G code for ourselves. And uh, this is here. I have different thickness. Uh, no, sorry. I want to make flow rate for each of the height here of 10 millimeter. So let's say we slice them. It's already like this. To add the code, we go to uh, every 10 millimeter. I change. I change the flow rate, right? So I can just go to here, click, and then we can right click, add custom G code. So we're gonna add it 120 because we started with 150 already. So it's here. Then you add another one here. Let's say it's just an example for you uh, here and add another Z code. So after doing it, 125. So yeah, that's it how you set different flow rate for the uh, according to the high of the of the object so when you reset everything that you want you can start to slice it and you can get it up to the end of course you should add g code every 10 millimeter here uh, the model is there you can just change to the values that you want so that's it La, let's go print it and we can see the result right away and here the flow rate tower that i make um, from up to here is, uh, from here to here, the flow rate 1.15, here to here 1.2, here to here 1.25, here to here 1.30, and here to here 1.35, here to here 1.40. Okay, so if you look closely at this towel, it, you see that this area, 
this area is much smooth and good, right? So I could say like the flow rate that best for my filament, mine, not your, and my printer, also mine, not yours, is this area, right? So, and they're actually the 100, uh, 1.20 and 125, good for here. And it's smooth from here to here, it's both sides will look good. So I said, that is the goal. That, that is the, the flow, rate, flow rate that we should use. So why not? I go print one version of this one, of, the, uh, of this one, but with the flow rate of 1.30 to see how it is. So here's the thing. Here, here is the one that I print with um, 0 0.15 layer thickness. Okay, and the flow rate is 1.3, so 30% more. And you see, the surface is much, much smoother and better. There's better consistent in the layer. But I do see, still see some of the holes here and there and here. So this Okay, this is the minimum that I could print with the 0 0.6 nozzle. I thought, okay, why not try with the 0 0.4 nozzle? So we could try with thinner layer to see how far we can go. And here you could see this, this, This is the 0 0.1 layer height with 1.3 um, flow rate override. And now you can see compared to the very first print that we have, this is so amazing. This, this is what we want to get. And uh, up to this product I'm very satisfied with it so I toss my test and try so this is how you look for the best or the optimal parameter for your print of course you can also try the temperature tower I I didn't try that because I got something I'm happy with here but yeah you can always try and you may even get better than this so this is how you create a flow test towers for TBU material or any other kind of material in general. I hope the tutorial give you some idea and make your 3D printing life better. I'm Luang from Google Tech and uh, happy to see you again in the next video.